to share. This is a space we want to hear from you. And um, there's you're not interrupting anything. So much more interested in, in what you guys have to say and share. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in to our webinar content for today with Cooter Journey and Holland Code. So welcome. Today we're talking through career exploration specifically around working with service members in those counseling conversations um, and advisement times. So going ahead and moving through our slide deck today, let me just move a couple of things around here. Um, we're gonna be looking at the work of John L. Holland. Uh, his work drives the Cooter Interest and Skills Assessments. We're gonna talk through Holland codes, what they are, how to utilize them. Um, and especially with that application. So in working with service members, how can we apply Holland code? Um, we will look at a few key pieces of the of the Cooter Journey platform that deal with Holland codes. And it'll also be a time of exploration um, just to, to take a peek at the Journey platform too. These webinars are offered at, on an ongoing um, at an ongoing pace. And so today we're focused on Holland codes. As we move, continue to move through 2024 and into 2025, there will be other topics explored. The journey system provides so many different tools to service members. And so we want to make sure that there are learning opportunities around the platform. Um, we are so sad that uh, Mariva was not able to meet with us to meet, join the session today. She had planned to, unfortunately, was called away. Um, but she is our... Um, our uh, go-to person, along with Emily and Aaron from the Dante's team, um, when it comes to Cooter Journey. So if you ever have any questions, Mariba is fantastic to reach out to. I know many of you have worked with her very closely. Um, and then I'm also joined by John Milroy, um, VP of our Partner Solutions team. So welcome, John. Good morning, or good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here. And then my name is Elizabeth Moore, and I work as an enablement manager with the Cooter platform. Um, prior to joining Cooter, I worked as a career coach and worked with students and adults who were navigating um, using Cooter and navigating for the future and used Cooter as the tool to do that. So we are absolutely honored to be in partnership with Dante's in the U.S. military. Um, Dante's has been a, um, a fantastic partner, and, and we are just so honored to work with you and um, and just to provide the tools that you need as you're working with your service members. So as a part of that contract, um, your, you and your service members have that lifetime access to Cooter Journey, um, the research-based assessments that cover interest skills, work values. There's a lot in the Journey platform. So the resume builder, exploration of careers, both based on assessments, based on MOS codes, uh, service members can go in and look at colleges and universities. They can prep for interviews and job searching. But here's the thing. Journey is, is for service members. It's also for you. So if you want to go in and pull content when you're doing workshops or if you're supporting any kind of event for service members. So um, feel free to use it if you have a service member say, you know, I'm interested in, you know, pick a university. Do you know much about that university? You can absolutely log into Journey in real time and explore those, those opportunities together. So use it as a tool for you and your service members. John, is there anything else that you want to add around uh, what is included in the Journey contract? Yeah, so we have kind of what we're doing right now um, with the, the webinars. So I know we work with Mariba and the rest of the team at Dante's to um, make sure that you and, and others that need access or knowledge, uh, some learning about the uh, Cooter Journey system can get that. Um, we work with them to provide that, and hopefully you can get that. Um, the goal is to have it almost every other month or every month, um, but uh, that would be one of the things that's covered in our contract with the Dante's team. Um, and it, again, it's act for active duty and reserve military members. Um, you as uh, administrators, those that work with the service member, are able to um, create a sample account as well, too. I know on the page that um, Elizabeth has here, there are some steps for you if you wanted to create a, a fake account, if you will, um, so you can see what your service member is seeing. So um, we do attend uh, conferences. I know Elizabeth was just recently at CCME, so we tried to get out to all the uh, education conferences for for military as well too 
Absolutely. And if you guys have upcoming events and you want to build Cooter into that, um, if you'll reach out to Mariba, um, she can also connect with us and we can find out how to support your events as well. So we're excited to be in partnership with you guys. Thank you, John. Um, we are, we have, you guys are going to have access to these slides. So if you're wondering about how do I access Cooter Journey, how do I get started? Um, these are some links. You don't have to write all these down. You guys will have access to this, but if you want to snap a picture, this is basically how your team can, uh, can connect with us and get started with utilizing the system. Okay. So um, from here, we are going to go ahead and jump into our content. I'm going to pop this slide back up a little bit later, but if you want to log into a sample account, you're welcome to do that. The username is service member one and the password is service. Um, so uh, the, the opportunity here, John, if you want to speak to this on how they can get in and then I will, um, I'll be right with you. I just had something occur. So if you want to speak to this on. Sorry, was on mute. Um, you will go I'm to Dante's right cooter.com and then um, there will be a login button. So you would click that and you would use service member one. Um, that is case sensitive. So capital S, capital M. Um, and the same thing with the password, lowercase, all service. And then you would be popped into what a um, an account would look like for um, for a service member. So they're going to be greeted. I know Elizabeth will show us here in a minute, but they'll be given, given access to their homepage where it can really be like the um, the starting point where they can see assessments and uh, resumes and uh, occupational information and kind of peel back that onion, if you will, going into their assessments and saying, well, this is a uh, what my fit is, my Holland code, what careers are here, what education do I need, um, and how they can go through the whole process of uh, prepare career preparedness. Awesome. John, thank you. I'm so sorry, yeah. guys. Just things crop up in life occasionally, right? So anyway, sorry, I had to step away for a second. But John, thank you for speaking to that. Yeah. Um, and we will have an opportunity in the next few minutes, um, a little bit later in our session to log in and you guys can access that account for your reference. I put it in the chat too. Um, and then you guys will also have access to that account after today. So let's jump into Holland Theory. So you guys indicated in the poll that um, some of you were very familiar or some of you have used Holland codes before in working with service members. And we have a good handful of folks who have not. So we're a pretty split crowd. Um, a few people who were not sure, they were unfamiliar with Holland codes. So we're excited to jump right into this content this afternoon and, um, and talk through what the Holland codes are and using them in application. So we have John L. Holland's theory of vocational choice, and you're seeing on the screen those six big buckets. We call this the Holland hexagon. Um, Holland code is designed to connect people with specific work environments that fit their career personality. And so each of these big buckets represents some generalizations. So the realistic bucket, the social bucket, we're going to talk through those in just a second. But the goal would be that we can identify at least a couple of um, these codes for each individual and then use that in helping them um, connect with career, different career environments. This theory um, supports the Cooter Journey system that you and your service members have access to. So the career assessments that they're taking, taking are all being driven by Holland codes. So the theory of um, career choice is that one, individuals' personalities can be described as a combination of these six types. Two, we can describe work environments the same way. So we want to match people who are realistic to realistic work environments. And when we do that, research shows that we see increased satisfaction. What we're looking for is good fit. That's what we're trying to determine. So it's important that, um, that individuals know about their Holland code and know what their code means, and then they can use that when they're looking at different career opportunities. So we're gonna look at the codes here in just a moment, but before we do, um, if you'll kind of take a guess, and you don't have to, to post right now, but um, if you wanna take a guess, which Holland code would represent Albert Einstein? So we think about Albert Einstein, 
which Holland code do we think would most represent him? And in just a second, we're gonna be talking through these Holland codes and we'll come back and, and you can be thinking through which one might be representative of Albert Einstein. So when I come over here, um, we're gonna take a deep dive into these Holland codes and, um, and then we'll come back to which one might represent Albert Einstein. So from here, uh, let's start with realistic. So this is at the, on, at the top of the Holland hexagon. Realistic are the people that we call our doers. Um, I lovingly refer to this as our Home Depot people, right? So uh, for uh, if you're familiar with Home Depot, it's, you know, doers get things done. These are people who get things done. Now that's a massive stereotype, um, but really these are hands-on folks. They like practical work. They're often very down to earth. They have strong skills that are mechanical, electrical, um, maybe agricultural, working with animals, working with tools. Um, they like a product. They like for there to be some kind of tangible product at the end of a work session. So these are very realistic people. Um, the next one would be investigative. These are our thinkers. Now, I hate that stereotype because it might imply that other career personalities are not thinking, and that's furthest from the truth. But this is a... Um, this is one of their, their main uh, values is really asking questions. This is a very curious and studious group of people. They are often drawn to science, um, biology, physical sciences. They often end up in the medical field or the scientific world, very strong in math, very strong in science. Um, independent thinkers. These are the people who first look at the stars, looked at the stars and said, could we put someone on the moon? Um, so this is, this is, you know, a really fascinating group of people, and they are categorized mainly as being thinkers. The next group would be the artistic folks. These are creators. So the creators are very free thinking. They do not love a lot of structure that can feel very prohibitive to them. Um, they like space to be creative, to be free thinking. They often do have an artistic ability and they end up in artistic industries. Um, it's very easy to think, you know, yes, drawing and painting, but really the creators, it's bigger than that. It gets into just language, putting content out into the world. And these are people who they are creative and they, that they need an outlet. So they often will seek out industries that give them a creative outlet. So if we think through um, these three individuals on the screen, I am going to post a quick polling question. So the polling question is popping up. Which Holland code do you think best describes Albert Einstein? If you had to guess, which code do you think best describes Albert Einstein? Okay, what do we think? All right, I'm seeing investigative coming in really strongly, but let's go ahead and talk them through. So if you said investigative for Albert Einstein, you would be correct. Um, so definitely categorized as being a thinker, being very curious, asking questions that no one else was asking. Um, Serena Williams, if you were to think through about, um, you know, which, which code would best describe Serena Williams, um, realistic or artistic, if you're thinking realistic, you would be correct. So Serena, it's very hands-on. Um, technical work. There's a product at the end of a work session. We won the game. We learned a new skill. We completed a practice. Um, so very, uh, lots of athletic ability, obviously. So Serena Williams would be um, categorized as realistic. And then Taylor Swift would be artistic. So putting that content out in the world, um, you know, a free thinker and, um, and communicating not only through singing, but also through songwriting. Um, on a, on a large platform. Okay, so let's move to our next one. If we think about Walt Disney, which Holland code do you think would best represent Walt Disney? So if you kind of have that in mind, which code do you think would best represent Walt Disney? I'm gonna launch that question. Um, you don't have to answer it just yet. We're gonna go through the next three codes and, uh, and you can respond as you feel ready. So we're gonna look at social next. So if we look at that Holland hexagon, we're at the social bucket. 
social people are who we consider our helpers. I always think about Mr. Rogers, you know, when something tragic happens, he would always say, look for the helpers. The helpers are people who often end up in professions that we traditionally do consider community helpers. So teaching, um, public servants, you know, those types of things. You're going to find nurses in this category, counselors. Many of you, I think, would probably have a strong social component to your personality with your desire to help service members and help people around you. Um, these are typically a, a very friendly group of folks, and they are very interested in teaching, informing, helping other people, um, and they really have strong social skills around working with people of all different personalities. So our helpers are, I mean, all of these, all these different personalities are very important. Helpers are often one that, that this particular group probably resonates strongly with. The next group would be the enterprising persuaders. So when we think about persuaders, these are folks that it, easy examples would be, you know, someone who works in sales, the CEO of a company. So someone who can develop a vision and get people to rally around it. And so these are folks who often do end up in some type of management position. They're usually very self-confident. They can talk to anybody. They're ambitious. They're energetic. Um, they are very interested in establishing a goal and then working to achieve it. So we're going to we're going to set some benchmarks and we're going to work to get there. So it's not surprising why they often do up, end up in management positions or even in like a sales position. OK, then we have our organizers. These are conventional folks. So organizers, I mean, all of these, again, are important, but we cannot have the world function without our organizers, right? They keep order. They are very um, me mechanical, methodical, clerical. They have strong math skills. These people are dependable. You know, we can do all the things in the world, but if there's no power or there's no water, I mean, it just shuts everything down. And so they're very detail oriented and they often get into the day to day stuff. So when we look at any strong organization, we're going to see all six of these different career personalities. So let's go back to our question. We have got a few folks responding or a good number of folks responding. Actually, when we think about Walt Disney, artistic, enterprising or social, or excuse me, enterprising, conventional or um, social, which personality do you think Walt Disney would be? And while we could absolutely say he's social and he's artistic. Um, enterprising would definitely be the, uh, the you know, kind of the, the overarching theme for Walt Disney. So I'm going to, um, I think I'm sharing this so you guys can see it, but Walt Disney would be enterprising for sure is that leader, that persuader, casting a vision and working to get people to buy into that vision. What about Melinda Gates? So looking at Melinda, do you think she would be social? Do you think she would be conventional? Um, if you're thinking social, you would be correct. So, of course, um, she it does work. She has training as an engineer and very methodical. But with her leadership around um, different social justice causes and, and different um, women's rights around the world, her um, support of education for girls and getting girls into STEM, Melinda it would definitely be categorized as social. And then what about the honor the honorable Ventress Gibson? So she is the director of the US Mint and we can definitely consider her conventional. If we did not have our money system, can you even imagine? So um, when we look at uh, the honorable Ventress Gibson, um, uh, we could definitely categorize her as conventional, that methodical, orderly, and just keeping keeping us running as a nation, right? All right, so when we think about all the Holland Codes among the US military, um, and we look at service members across all branches, if you had to take a guess, what do you think would be the most common um, Holland Code for all of our US service members? So I am going to launch a quick poll if you wanna take a guess. Um, as folks are guessing, uh, John, I'm going to turn it over to you. Let me just put yeah. this back up on the screen. So as we think about it, just kind of going back to the six Holland codes, codes um, and keeping in mind the, the question that Elizabeth just asked, you know, what is the most common code for all service members? So we have realistic where people are the doers, um, investigative, they're thinkers, artistic, they're creative people, social, they're helpers. Uh, enterprising, they're the group that persuades people. Um, and then conventional, they're the organized, they're very 
on point for a lot of things. Um, so just having that as a reminder for what the, the six Holland types are. Um, and then um, if you go to the next one, Elizabeth. Um, before I do, we've got, I'm gonna share the, oh. the polling results really quickly. We've got, um, we've got some interesting polling results. So I'm just sharing right now. It looks like realistic is in the is in the top running. And Joshua made a good point. It really depends on what they do in the military. Um, so it, which is a good point, Joshua. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next one. When we look at what is the most prevalent across the US military, and again, of course, all of these are represented in the US military, but what is the most common? It would be enterprising. John, do you wanna to speak to that? Yeah. So when we look here at Cooter, when Elizabeth and I look at the, the results, share them with the Dante's team, the one that stands out um, pretty much, a, a, there. I mean, there's come some that are close, but the one that stands out the most for all branches um, as a whole would be enterprising, the, the persuaders. They like to lead or influence other people. They are ambitious. They're outgoing. They're confident. Um, they develop a leadership ability. I don't know if any of this sounds uh, like what you have or your experience with your with your service members, but um, when I kind of look at it, the the idea of leading or influencing other people or leadership uh, ability, um, self confident, um, that kind of stands out to me. That yes, that could. And some of you, I think, like you said, Joshua, like it depends on what they do in the military, but. Overall, what we see is the enterprising and very closely behind is the investigative um, investigative parts for, for the service members. But yeah, I don't know if that's a surprising thing or if some of you are saying, yeah, you know what, enterprising was uh, what I thought. But um, again, very, very close with the investigative, but that's the, the one that stands out the most when service members are completing their assessment results. Thanks, John. Diana, you asked a great question in the chat. You said, can you talk about how men and women differ on the Ryasek scale, Ryasek scale for social? Um, Diana, it's a great question around um, kind of those, those gender differences um, across Ryasek. And do you mind expanding a little bit? And you're welcome to post in the chat or if you want to unmute, um, but if you want to speak to that a little bit. So I spent a significant amount of time as a MAPS ESS where we uh, deal in the ASVAB Career Exploration Program with the uh, with the Holland Codes, you know, pretty much on a daily basis. Um, we have a, a score scale uh, that's for men, for women, and for all in the RIASET codes because um, women tend to score lower on realistic and higher on social, um, sort of because of the way we raise women in our society. And men tend to score higher on the realistic and lower on the social scales. And so when you have a man who's, who's maybe tied for you know, investigative and social or pretty close to tied, sometimes you want to look at the other scale to see if maybe social is actually their primary based on their gender and vice versa for realistic. And I was, um, I, I'm pretty sure that Cooter Journey doesn't do that differentiate. I wondered, um, it, you know, uh, what your stats are for that, if there's any changes to that since it's been a while for me to, to, uh, work with MAPS and, and uh, the ASVAB program. Yeah, Diana, thank you. That's so interesting. Um, and I have so many questions. I want to hear more about this. And John, I'm thinking uh, I want to connect with our data team because we have a, a lot of research. We have white papers published to our site. I wanna go do some digging and see what we have around this very thing. Um, and if you're comfortable with it, would you would you be okay with us following up with you if we have any other questions? Not at all, or I can just hook you up with the folks that run the ASVAB Career Exploration Program out of MEPCOM, uh, because uh, they're the ones that, you know, created this and, and their data uh, dug into it a lot. Absolutely. Yeah, I think what we'll want to do is if you could provide us that information, that would be great. Um, but then we'll also loop um, 
we'll uh we'll let Mar uh we'll connect with Mariba as well too um so we can um really break that down because we can talk with our individual that does our data here because I know he can find out that information you know do service members based on you know male female um so it would be it would be interesting it's a great question um and I know we can find it I just don't have it available at this exact moment absolutely uh, just drop me an email I'll put oh I knew you have it from the meeting registration but I'll also put my email in the chat thank oh you. thank you appreciate that thank you all right any other thoughts about about um the Holland codes and service members assessments or anything like that before we move on All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and move on to talking through uh, Holland Code in counseling conversations. So when we talk about the application of Holland, um, and to Diana's point, when we get into, you know, okay, how we're gonna use this information when meeting with service members, um, the Holland Code can become a very powerful foundational tool. So basically when, in, when individuals take the assessment, they receive their Holland Code. Um, and for this particular example, the Holland code here is SEC, which when I hear that, because I'm in the South, I hear SEC football, right? But that's not what we're talking about. So with this particular Holland code, um, we are able to see that the individual is strong, showing the strongest interest when it comes to social, enterprising, and conventional. And so we can see on this, um, this diagram here, that social is the highest, and then you can see it's closely followed, or not closely, but we have some other uh, codes that are all pretty, you know, there's not a huge gap between enterprising and conventional. So to your point, Diana, that sometimes you may see, oh, th there's a couple codes that they're pretty close on, and so you can use that in those conversations. Um, when we look at what I'm going to call that spider web, I know there's a technical term, but I don't know what it is, to be honest. Um, when we look at the spider web, we can see that social is pulling the strongest. And again, there's a there's a lot of alignment between enterprising and conventional. One thing that's interesting about Holland Code is when we look at that spider web, you can see that it's really pulling down. And those are what we would consider more social areas. So enterprising, working as a leader, social, working with people. So it's really pulling towards working with people. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to Holland Code is that this is not prescriptive. We are not handing someone a prescription that says you are SEC. It's really designed to be a hypothesis and a reflection point. And so sometimes it's easy for service members to look at this and say, oh, well, I have to choose a job that is SEC because that's what the assessment says, right? Um, that's really not how this is designed. It's here to be a jumping off point. So there's some really great questions that we can ask service members around, does this align with what you know about yourself? Have you done activities in the past that fit with this? Um, do any of these occupations, you know, describe you? What do your family and your friends say about you? Would this fit with what they know about you? So one of the tools that we are providing to you guys is a, and let me grab this really quickly. One of the tools that we're providing to you guys is a, um, a document, and I'm gonna go, go grab it so I can show it to you, is a document that will walk you through the coaching process. So let me just make this larger so that you can see it. My eyes are terrible, so I hate when people are having to squint. But this is around when you get, when you have the assessment results for a service member, um, these are just some ways to talk about it with them. So taking time before you meet with them, it, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. I worked with, with as a career counselor, so I understand you don't always get prep time, even if you want it, but getting a moment to maybe see their assessment results and then getting them involved in that communication. So again, those questions around what do you, not what do you think about this, but how does this fit with what you know about yourself? We absolutely want to use um, very straightforward language um, so that, you know, it's easy to understand. This was not designed to be a complex um, theory for, for, 
users to understand for our service members and just adults and students around the world to understand. Um, but again, just having them start to take ownership of it. So this assessment told me that I was social. So how does that fit with what I know about myself? Is that surprising to me? Is it not surprising? And here's why. So you guys will have this document. Um, I'm going to share this in the chat in the next moment so that you'll have it. And then the other document that I want to supply you with are our Holland Code cards. Um, what are the Holland Code cards? Well, these are designed, let me make this larger. These are designed to give you some talking points. So let's say that I showed that I had a high artistic interest. You could hand me this card during our conversation and this is going to give a space for me to say, okay, it says I'm artistic, what does that mean? So this is gonna tell me that I'm confident in language or some kind of you know, artistic skill, that I value self-expression. These are some typical occupations. These are some examples of occupations, but you have all six of these cards. You will have these um, for when working with service members. So you have something to hand them. So it may not be that I walk out thinking, oh, I should be a nurse. It might be, I should look for professions where I'm gonna be working with people in a helping capacity. So it gives some language. And sometimes that can be the biggest uh, struggle is just helping service members and, and people in general. This is just a common thing across um, lots of different groups, helping individuals develop a language to talk about their interests and talk about what's important to them and what they value. And so this is a spot just to help them do that. So I wanna pause right here what kinds of questions do we have? Do we like this? Does this feel like something you would like to utilize um, in meeting with service members? You're welcome to respond to in the chat or you can unmute. All right, so as we are moving forward, um, we are going to be looking in just the next moment, we're going to be looking at the, um, let me grab really quickly. We're going to be looking at a role-playing activity. So in just a moment, we are gonna move into breakout groups. So before we talk through what that's gonna look like, I wanna give you an idea of what to expect when you get in your breakout group. So you're gonna be in a group with a couple of other people, and this is a time to kind of talk through using Holland in a counseling session. And so if you'll think through, if you've got um, you know, two or three folks, if you have four or five folks in a group, that's okay too. But if you'll think, about, um, you know, if one or two people in the group are the counselors and one person is the service member, um, how could you explain the Holland Code to the service member? So in this scenario, uh, in this role-playing example, the service member's Holland Code is showing to be R, C, S, and remember that would be realistic, conventional, and social. And you'll just take a moment and you can do this very quickly, just kind of explain what that code means. And then the service member is going to reflect on their Holland code, but you'll ask them some prompting questions to do that. So we're gonna be thinking through, you know, what can that Holland code kind of look like? So before we move into this role-playing time, John and I are going to model this for you. So I'm gonna go back a couple slides. So if you'll bear with me for just a second while I do that, um, so let's pretend that I just received my Holland code of SEC and John is the counselor and I am the service member and I've just seen these results for the very first time. So John, I'm going to turn it over to you to be the counselor and I'm going to be the service member and we'll go from there. All right. Well, good afternoon, Elizabeth. Um, I know to see that you finished up your your assessments with Inside Cooter Journey. Um, your first letter was S, and therefore is your strongest is social, meaning you like to help other people. So tell me about activities that you've recently done that align with this. Yeah, it's really interesting that my my first letter was social. That doesn't surprise me. And, and you asked about activities. One of my favorite ways to spend my time um, is uh, one of my favorite new things that I'm doing is uh, volunteering at my child's school. And I've been working at the welcome desk and it's so much fun because I'm in the middle of everything. People are coming in, I get to greet everybody. And then when somebody's got a question or they need something, I can just quickly you know, get them to the person that, that can help them or whatever. So it's just been a lot of fun. So it, it this is not surprising to me. That makes sense to me. Perfect. And your, your next um, code was, 
was enterprising. And so that means that you enjoy leadership opportunities. How, how do you feel that aligns with the activities you currently engage in? So I, I recently moved into an NCO position and I, I, my favorite part of it is leading my team. And so I guess that also really aligns with um, my social interest too of helping people. So yeah, that's not surprising to me either that enterprising was in there. Okay, perfect. And, and your, your last, letter was was c which is conventional um which indicates you like to do things and you're, you're very organized very orderly um can you think of examples that you can share with me that how this fits your current work or, or life it's interesting obviously in the military we have to be organized um but i don't know that i necessarily want to pursue a career that would be considered conventional i i kind of thrive on chaos and it doesn't scare me so I, you know, I, I don't know that that would be necessarily how I would describe myself. I have to be organized, but it's not necessarily how I would consider, you know, my, my strengths or what I'm interested in or anything like that. So, yeah. Okay. What, what I want to do next with you is we want to start looking at um, occupations that are inside your Cooter Journey account. And we want to focus on careers that then begin with, because you mentioned the conventional part, maybe is not the biggest thing for you, but we'll want to focus on careers that hit on your social and enterprising um, as the primary code and, and identify a few opportunities or occupations that might look pretty appealing to you. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks. All right. Okay, and in scene. So that was our little role play around um, what, how to, uh, you know, how to use these codes. Um, John did a great job of, of helping me pinpoint where I could see these, these codes in my own life, but then also give me space to talk through, okay, maybe that's not so much me. And it was a safe space for me to um, kind of process my hauling codes. So we are now going to move into our breakout rooms. And in your breakout rooms, you'll be doing something very similar. So you'll take a moment and explain what hauling codes what the Holland code means. So our RCS is the code. I'm going to put some resources in the chat so that you can uh, see those those RCS codes, the Holland cards. And then we'll also, um, you know, you'll want to ask help the service member. So one person in your group be the service member, and they're going to reflect on their codes. You're going to want to ask them some questions to help them reflect. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Nicole asked. Um, how we can access or download the PDF resources. I'm gonna post them right in the chat. So let me do that really quickly so that you guys will have those codes. Emily, do you wanna take a moment and talk through how the breakout group is gonna go? What can everybody expect as they're moving into their breakout Main group? That was beautiful. It was seamless. Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome back. How do we, how do we feel? I'm gonna post the polling question so you can give some feedback about your breakout session. So go ahead and rank your breakout session. And this could be related to the discussion. It could be related to, you know, what was it like moving to a breakout session? Did it feel okay? So go ahead. Um, so hopefully the polling question is popping up on your end. So let us know what you thought. So I take it 10 is the best? Um, you know, that's a good question. Let's say yes. Tennis. Uh, Erin, I'm I'm giggling. It was meant to be a, a rank base, but I guess whenever it launches as a poll, it, it is a, a slightly reflecting different there. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> there, Emily. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so we'll take it as ten is the best. Absolutely, and then and. Yeah, go I ahead. I was going to say it's Aaron. And considering this is the first time we've done this. Yes. <laughs> so I, I do want to add, you know, uh, this time around, we assigned automatically now for future sessions, you know, depending on the session, uh, there are there is the option for participants to select the breakout rooms that they want to uh, move into. So, you know, that may be a consideration, but uh, we love to hear your feedback. So as you receive the uh, webinar um, survey, please include any other feedback. As always, everything is anonymous between the polls and the survey for every webinar that we host. Yes. 
Thank you, Emily. So as you guys are responding, and it looks like we've got some feedback coming in. So let us know what you thought about the role playing. Um, want to want to uh, reflect on your conversations. So I saw some good things in the chat. Um, one of the things that came up in our conversation, Erin, you asked a good question. I got my Holland Code results. Are these going to be true for my lifetime? Like if I'm RCS today, am I going to be RCS in a few years, you know, next year? How, you know, how much do these change, say the same, stay the same or shift over my lifespan? It's a great question, Erin. And others may have been wondering something similar. Um, typically with Holland Codes and adults, they stay pretty consistent. Now you might see some variation a little bit over time where um, maybe conventional is a little bit higher than social. And so it changes order. So maybe if you were RCS, maybe on another day where you're feeling more social, you might be RSC, you know, that kind of thing. But for the most part, we typically don't see huge shifts in adults with those Holland codes. Now, teenagers, that's a different story. They're growing and changing every day. And so really up until about age 17, we do see shifts. We see different parts of their personality emerging as they're growing up. So really career theorists say that age 17 is when we really can know the direction that a, that a student is headed when it comes to their career interests. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, let's jump can over. Ask, to, yeah, go ahead, Erin. Yeah. So, so um, just for the counselors that are out there, um, yeah. because I know a lot of people join the military at age 17 and 18, and yeah. then probably in their late twenties, they actually really start thinking about their career and their future if they're staying in the military. So would you recommend for counselors that this tool can, could be used a couple of times in someone's career, even when they are getting ready to transition? Yes, yes. And you know, a lot of this, we were talking about how, you know, a big part of this exploration is developing a language for ourselves, right? I am social, I am confident, you know, those types of things. And so to your point, Erin, if taking the assessment again is an affirmation for that service member, then yes, take it again. You know, um, that is not, not an issue or detrimental in any way. Um, so we're getting some great commentary in the chat as well. So thank you, Ms. Wells, appreciate that. Um, we have just a few minutes before we wrap. So for those of you who were able to engage in some dialogue around using the Holland Code and that reflection, um, you're welcome to unmute and kind of share what it was like hearing from the counselors, hearing from the service members, or you can just post in the chat what the experience was like. Anybody have anything you want to share from your time together, from your breakout time together? Yeah. Well, and this is a spot too you can share in the chat if you would prefer. So just to kind of sum up, I know we're coming to the end of our time today. To sum up, um, we know that with Holland Code, we know that with Holland Code, service members um, are receiving that code, they're, they're being exposed to what their present code is. And then from there, moving into finding programs of study, finding some career training programs that are going to be similar in work environment to their hall and code. Um, and along with that comes with identifying jobs or occupations that are going to be a good fit for that particular service member. So along that vein, with just a couple of minutes that we have left, want to direct your attention to the journey platform. And so this is where service members can go in, explore the journey platform. Yeah, Jose, go ahead. I'm seeing you've got your hand raised. Oh no, Jose, we're getting some feedback on the line. I don't know that, that I, I don't know that I can make out. I can't quite hear, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I can't hear either, Elizabeth. It's very staticky. Yeah, Jose, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so disappointed. I wanted to hear what you had to share. Do you mind posting in the chat? And then we could even follow up in future webinars. Would that be okay? Yeah, 
Yeah, and it might be, as I know sometimes things can be technology, right? So in the future, um, yeah, thanks Jose, appreciate the thumbs up. In the future, um, I sometimes I'll call into a session too. I, John and I were on a call just a couple of weeks ago. And when I launched the call, I sounded like Mickey Mouse. Don't know how I managed that. So, um, so Jose, thanks for the, thanks for the attempt. I appreciate that. Yeah, we'll definitely be watching the chat um, for any feedback you have. And yes, sorry, so sorry about that. So I'm jumping over to the Dante site. In the last few minutes that we have remaining, um, I'm posting, oh, thank you, Erin. Erin's posting our upcoming military learning monthly webinars. I'm posting the Dante site. I'm going to go log in as a service member. And I just wanna kind of give you an idea for service members who are, um, you know, they've gotten their Holland code and now they're ready to go and explore. Um, this is where they would actually go to jump into the navigator, I mean, sorry, the journey system, and they would come over here to explore occupations. They are able to explore around their Holland codes, so they can absolutely look at their assessment results and explore based off of that. But in the example that John and I gave, I was really not jiving with all of my codes. I was really interested in, in the social and the enterprising aspects, so I could come over here to my Holland codes. And under Explore Occupations, if I look at a specific, you know, related to a Holland code, I can actually search for occupations based on those codes. So I'm typing in S and E, and I am going to indicate the level of education I'm interested in. I'm going to say a bachelor's degree, and I'm going to click apply, and I have occupations sitting here. So this is where, this is a big system. We will have upcoming webinars. I want to turn it over to Erin, who is sharing some webinar information but we will have upcoming webinars to explore this more in depth around um, the occupation search and tie the system. So Erin, I wanna turn it over to you for webinar information. Okay, okay, well, thank you, Elizabeth. And um, what, I'm, what we're trying to do here is just make sure since we've got a, a captive audience that we're letting you know about other Dante's webinars that are coming up. And um, this is gonna be a new initiative that's focused on the military learner. Uh, the College Board is going to be doing uh, monthly webinars, um, just as Cooter Journey does for us. And um, the, the first one is coming up on the 11th of April. We'll probably be um, putting this out next week. I try to, or we try to promote them at least two weeks out. So uh, if you're at any point looking for upcoming webinars, I did put the link there. Oh, and there you go. Thank you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth um, is, is putting this up for you. This is what the website currently looks like. And you'll notice um, that CLEP does a series of webinars on their website specifically for education counselors and academic institutions. So there's a link to that. But next week, we're going to be also putting up specific links for, um, for the event on April 11th, and that is going to be geared towards the service members. So what we're hoping is that once you guys see that, when you have folks come into your office, um, you will let service members know that this is happening and it will be um, that target audience will be service members for the one that I that we advertise here in the next week. Um, so thanks, Elizabeth, for uh, letting us uh, take some of your time. Yeah, Erin, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so I am, and I'm seeing we have one last comment from Jose. Uh, thank you, Jose. I appreciate that. Um, and I'd like to follow up with you to find out a little bit more about the scores that you're referencing. So I know we're right at time. Um, Aaron and Emily, thank you for hosting today. Everybody, thank you for being here. Uh, John, thanks for joining. Um, very excited to, to meet with you guys. We will be sending follow-up resources from today. Emily, is there anything else that we need to be mindful of as we wrap today's session? 
Elizabeth, I'll go ahead and stop the recording. If anyone has follow-on questions, uh, we'll stay online for a few more moments here. But otherwise, thank you all for joining us. Um, at the end of today's webinar, you'll receive a survey. We look forward to hearing your feedback and, uh, and also look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. So I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day. And Elizabeth, as always, thank you to uh, you and John and the rest of the Cooter Journey team uh, for the amazing work that you do uh, to provide these webinars from month to month. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Emily. Appreciate that. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day, and we look forward to connecting with you in the future. Um, I'm taking note, Jose, of your, of like I shared a moment ago in the chat, and Cassie, I see that you, this was something you were also feeling, the sentiment. So we'll, uh, not sentiment, but the statement. So we'll dig into this to learn more and, uh, and have some follow-up. So thank you.